Tech Chop is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. TechPodcasts.com. If it's tech, it's here. Want to keep the man out of your personal files? I'll show you several ways you can protect your data using encryption. Stay tuned. This episode of Tech Chop is brought to you by GoToMeeting with HD Faces. Welcome to episode 14 of Tech Shop. I, of course, am Paul Bauer, a.k.a. Twitter.com slash Pablo. In this episode, I'll show you several ways to protect your data using encryption, whether you want to protect your email, a couple of sensitive files, or your entire hard drive. You may be saying to yourself, Paul, it's not like I work for the CIA. Why would I need encryption? That answer is fairly simple. I have two words for you. Identity theft. Did your ears perk up a bit? Yes, identity theft is a huge buzzword that you hear on the news and commercials almost every day. It's an increasing epidemic that you should protect yourself from. Think about how much sensitive information you have on your computer. Tax information, bank information, all sorts of stuff, right? You need to protect it. Philip Zimmerman, the creator of PGP, the world's most widely used email encryption software, once asked this question of those who didn't feel the need for encryption. Perhaps you think your email is legitimate enough that encryption is unwanted. If you really are a law-abiding citizen with nothing to hide, then why don't you always send your paper mail and postcards? Why not submit to drug testing on demand? Why require a warrant for police searches of your house? Are you trying to hide something? You must be a subversive or a drug dealer if you hide your mail inside envelopes. Or maybe a paranoid nut! Do law-abiding citizens have any need to encrypt their email? We all know that by sending a letter in an envelope is not in itself a sneaky act, right? We just don't want strangers sticking their nose where it doesn't belong. You may not realize this, but a lot of the stuff you do on your computer is the digital equivalent of sending all your snail mail on a postcard. Anyone between you and the destination could possibly grab the postcard and read it. What if that postcard had sensitive information on it? Do I have your attention yet? So what can we protect with encryption? Pretty much everything. That's what I'm going to show you today. I will show you how to protect the files on your computer and even protect your entire hard drive. I will also tell you how to protect your communications through email, instant messenger, and even internet phones. Are you ready, 007? Let's do this. Starting off, let's look at protecting individual files. There are several great tools you can use if you only have a handful of files or even just a directory you want to protect. First one up in Windows is EFS, or Encrypting File System. EFS is built into the Microsoft NTFS file system and is available on all versions of Windows since Windows 2000. It's easy to use. Just right-click the file or folder you want to protect, select Properties, Advanced, and then you check a box. You'll notice that all the files that are encrypted will now have green lettering. EFS is transparent to the user. If you double-click on a file, it gets decrypted on the fly. When it's closed, it gets encrypted again. The encryption keys used are protected by the user's Windows login credentials. If an administrator changes the user's password, then the encryption keys are lost and the files cannot be recovered. So, be careful with that. If you want to use something other than the built-in EFS encryption, you can also use a really cool open source program called TrueCrypt. TrueCrypt can protect individual files in an interesting way. Basically, it can create an encrypted virtual volume that looks like a regular file. You can then mount that file using a specified password. And if you want, you can also require a key file to mount the encrypted volume for two-factor authentication. Once mounted, you can save your documents in the encrypted volume. Like EFS, once the volume is mounted, files are decrypted on the fly when you open them. TrueCrypt also lets you create a hidden volume using a different password. That way, if someone has a gun to your head asking for your password, you can give them the password to the fake volume, which will open up a different virtual encrypted volume with a bunch of random stuff in it that you don't really care about. Your sensitive stuff will be safe and hidden in another layer. Pretty tricky, right? TrueCrypt is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Since we're talking about TrueCrypt, let's talk about full hard drive encryption. By that, I mean that every single bit of data on your hard drive is encrypted, even the operating system. Encrypting your hard drive is really great because it protects your computer from having the administrator account compromised using an offline password reset, which is a very common method for bad guys to get into your computer. Let's say you're at a Starbucks, and you run to the restroom real quick, and while you're in there, some guy swipes the laptop out of your bag. You can rest easy that your data is safe. 
When that guy boots up your laptop, they'll be prompted for a password which they can't break. If they try to bypass the security with a boot disk, the hard drive will look like a blank disk. Sure, you lost an expensive laptop, but at least they didn't get your bank information or something else more valuable. For Windows users, TrueCrypt has the ability to fully encrypt your hard drive, Windows and all. It will require a password at boot up in order to decrypt the drive and access Windows. This feature in TrueCrypt is currently only available for Windows and does not work with the Linux or Mac versions. Windows users, since Windows Vista, have also been able to encrypt their entire hard drive using BitLocker. BitLocker is only available in the more expensive Enterprise and Ultimate versions of Windows. And there are also some processor requirements. If you don't have the right CPU, or if you don't want to fork over the cash for Enterprise or Ultimate, you may want to look at TrueCrypt or another solution instead. A good alternative to TrueCrypt or BitLocker in Windows is CompuSec. CompuSec is a really awesome free encryption suite that not only offers full hard drive encryption, but also allows you to encrypt third-party media on your system like CDs and DVDs, plus a lot of other free tools. If you're an Ubuntu Linux user and you want to encrypt your hard drive, you should think about doing it when you first set it up because that's the easiest way to accomplish it. With a typical Ubuntu install CD, you can select to encrypt your hard drive at install time. If you want to do it later, there is a process, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. For you Mac users, or at least Lion users, Apple has File Vault 2, which introduces XTS AES 128-bit full hard drive encryption. File Vault 2 and the original File Vault both also allow you to encrypt all the files in your home directory, sort of like EFS can in Windows. Now that we know some ways we can encrypt our computer files, next we will discuss encrypting our communications with others. But first... SPONSOR! Being able to attach a face to a name is important. It enhances our relationships, the way we do business. But unfortunately, meeting all of your clients and colleagues in person can be impossible. That's why I recommend GoToMeeting with HD Faces. It lets you meet face-to-face -face from anywhere in the world. With GoToMeeting by Citrix, it just takes a webcam and a click to collaborate in a group HD video. You can see your attendees eye to eye while collaborating on documents in real time. You'll feel instantly connected even if you're thousands of miles apart. Plus, GoToMeeting is easy to set up and simple to use. I've used GoToMeeting for video conferences and it's simply amazing. With HD video, it's almost like the person is right there in the room with you. Start hosting your own face-to-face -face online meetings today with GoToMeeting. TechShop viewers can try it for free for 30 days. Don't wait for this special offer. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use promo code PODCAST. Be sure to use the promo code PODCAST. In the first part of this episode, we talked about file encryption and full hard drive encryption. Now let's work to keep our online communication secret. First, let's take a look at email. If you're using Microsoft Exchange, for instance, and your administrator set it up correctly, then when you access your email box via the web or via Outlook, the connection from you to the mail server is encrypted using SSL. What happens when you send out an email to your friend's Gmail account? Well, in transit, it gets sent over standard SMTP port 25, which is plain text. That means that anyone sniffing the network between your mail server and their mail server can capture what you're sending right off the wire, kind of like a postcard. Let's put an envelope over our postcard, shall we? In order to do it, though, both the person you are sending to and you have to be set up to send encrypted email. There are two main ways of setting up encrypted email. The first one involves SSL certificates and certificate authorities. It's called SMIME. SMIME's kind of a pain in the butt to set up correctly, so I won't explain that here. I will, however, let you know that you can get free SSL certificates for this from startssl.com. The other way people generally encrypt email is using PGP, or pretty good privacy. That's actually a misnomer because it's actually badass privacy, and even the FBI can't crack it. Actual PGP costs money, but there is a free open source alternative that's fully compatible with PGP called GPG, or New Privacy Guard. GPG comes pre-built in with Ubuntu Linux and other distros, but you can also download a Windows version for it. For Mac users, you can download Mac GPG. With GPG, you can create an encrypted private key and a public key that you can hand out to people. The way it works is actually pretty great and genius. If you want to send out an encrypted email, you'll first encrypt your message with a one-time session key, which turns your text into a random bunch of nonsense. The session key is then encrypted with the recipient's public key and sent to them. The only thing that can decrypt something that has been encrypted with a particular public key is the associated private key. When the recipient receives the message, they then decrypt the session key with the private key, 
and then they can decrypt the message with the session key. The message is intercepted in transit. All the bad guys get is a random bunch of letters and characters all mashed together. If you decide to start sending encrypted emails, you can follow my blog post on setting up a PGP key server so your friends can easily store their public keys and retrieve others. Next up is Instant Messenger. Just like email, when you send an instant message, your transmissions can be intercepted or they can be logged on the Instant Messenger server. To protect from both of those, I recommend using an open source Instant Messenger client called Pigeon. Pigeon supports MSN, Yahoo, Gtalk, AIM, and others. So you can keep using your favorite IM service. Pigeon by itself doesn't encrypt instant messages, but there is a plugin for Pigeon that does using GPG. With the plugin, you can create a private and public key pair and automatically send your public key to other users that have the plugin. If the person you are chatting with has the plugin as well, you'll see a notification and you can both start encrypting your conversation. The plugin creates an end-to-end -end encrypted conversation, and nothing you write can be intercepted or taken from IM server logs. Finally, let's talk a little about voice. The new hotness for phone service is VoIP, or Voice over IP. Lots of services are providing VoIP for free in some fashion or another. On most instant messengers, there's a free voice chat service so you can talk to your friends. Most of the time, that's vulnerable to eavesdropping. In fact, recently in the news, a VoIP conversation between the FBI and Scotland Yard was intercepted by the hacker group Anonymous and released to the internet. So yes, this threat is real. With the CompuSec suite mentioned earlier, there is an encrypted VoIP client called Closetalk that you can use to encrypt your voice transmissions. Well, that is if the other person has Closetalk as well. What if you want to encrypt your Gtalk conversation? Well, Philip Zimmerman, the creator of PGP, has a working solution. It's called Zphone. It's currently in beta and has been tested with Gtalk, MSN Messenger, Yahoo Messenger, MagicJack, and others. Both the call participants must be using Zphone for it to work, but they can use it over their existing VoIP service to encrypt calls, which makes this tool really badass. I think I've exhausted all my bags of tricks for encrypting data and communications. If you can think of other cool tools, programs, or services that offer some form of encryption, let us know about it in the comments. Also, if you have any questions about the programs mentioned in this episode, let me know in the comments as well, or shoot me an email, info at techchop.com. Don't forget to check out some of our sister shows on the Tech Podcast Network, and also be sure to follow me on Twitter. I'm at El Pablo. I'll see you next time for your prescribed dose of Tech Chop. Right click the file or the folder. <laughs> create a private and public key pair. With the plugin, you can create a. God, it, there's so many P's in this. <laughs> With the plugin, you can private public key pair. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> the connection from your email server. Or from <laughs> This is really hard. It's a really long one. <laughs> okay. Can a brother get some subscribers up in here?